obviously intimately familiar with Metro Station yep. lore, but for all of the uninitiated in the audience, can you please explain the origins of Metro Station? Um, How did this start? Me and Trace met on the set of Hannah Montana when we were 16. Our, our Both of our siblings were on the show, and we had both just moved to L.A. I had been coming back and forth for a long time. Um, so it was like 12 mm -hmm. or something like that. But we had just both moved to L.A. at like 15, 16. Was it because of your uh, brother's job? Yeah, that you that's when there? we finally got a home, you know, okay. out, out in L.A. What did um, you think of L.A. when you arrived? I thought it was magic. You, you came from Texas. I thought it was magic. Yeah. I thought it was super magical. Um, now I see it more as like a Las Vegas. It's a silt. It's a city built by hundreds of thousands of people losing every single thing they have for every star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. It's like just piles of lost dreams just everywhere. Yeah. That's what that city's built on. Yeah, so I guess you seem a little more jaded now. <laughs> I don't know, Jade, it's the reality. It's like it's like Vegas too. It's like they they don't build those giant <laughs> skyscrapers, you know, giant buildings and all the lights and everything and having, you know, all the Avicii, or, you know, not Avicii obviously anymore, but all the DJs come through if people aren't losing a bunch of money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know yeah, what I mean? So you guys formed Metro Station together, although that's disputed as well. <laughs> Who really we started did. it? And you started I came posting up with the name. on uh, MySpace, and that was where right. you put music at the time. That's right. It was like the hybrid of all the social media that exists now. It was the best. You streamed music, posted pictures, you posted what I guess would be the equivalent of tweets, that's... and then TikTok kind of came along later on, and that was where music went to to get discovered. I think it was a whole psyop. They like yeah, bought TikTok. Tom out and then all all the things that were MySpace branched off into like Spotify mm -hmm. and Twitter and Instagram. <laughs> it's like, it used to all be in one. Yeah. You know? I still think that our societal <laughs> like addic like addiction to like dopamine hits comes from when you used to get all your notifications, like new new blog post comments, new comments, yeah. new friend requests. You get home, because remember, you didn't have it on your phone at that time. So you'd have to best. wait until you got home from work or from school to log in and then you log, just think about that. You had to log in every day. You didn't just get logged in automatically. <laughs> um, and, and you get all the new comments and you're like, ooh, I got all this new stuff. People want to talk to me. It was the best. That was the, we were it was a great time. So yeah. you guys were blowing up on MySpace. Yeah, we initially. got to like number three on the unsigned artist charts. That's what, again, another cool thing. They had like an unsigned artist chart. Mm -hmm. You know, it was just super cool. Yeah, so is that how you <clears throat> were discovered by your record label? That's when we took a meeting with Capitol. We, you know, they, they were like, oh, come hang out. And they brought us up to the roof of Capitol Records. And we're like, oh my goodness, you know, this is amazing. And then it was mm -hmm. Columbia actually who gave us a deal on their indie label, Red Ink. But then, you know, the moment we sold enough records they were like you're actually on columbia did you know uh no <laughs> I was but they all did that all the major labels you know they had their indie label it's like we're not gonna call you major you know when that was like cool it was like oh it's an indie label called uh red ink it's like oh that's totally organic it's like uh no who well, owns was, that uh, right yeah. <laughs> what was the direction they were trying to <clears throat> take it in i guess kind of they were did they, you feel like uh there was some pressure to there become was. more mainstream or there was but again we were always super into i mean i, I i've always just been super into great pop records and mm -hmm. i love pop music i'm a big pop junkie like i was saying earlier to you guys before we started the show like i grew up on now cds so just you know hits you know i love those um I was never a big record guy, like sitting through a whole record, but I love now because it was all the, yeah. it was all the top songs. You, you know, said so. that you thought they were trying to make you guys more emo. They were in the, I, I mean, to an extent, I think they were because we were kind of at a, we were kind of at a weird time where we had a lot of electronic elements in our music and um, the people we were around kind of wanted to put us more in that, like you were saying earlier, kind of a warp Tour-esque kind of a vibe. Mm -hmm. Um, but it was actually Rick Rubin who who came in and was like, you know, make them sound like their original demos because all of our original demos on like MySpace and stuff sounded very electronic. Okay. So. And how strong was the sentiment that you guys were industry plants? I mean, maybe that mm -hmm. term wasn't what people used at the time, but of because of your way. ties and, and Trace Cyrus's ties to yeah. his father and Miley, his sister, and you being related to... Mitchell, was that a sentiment that you saw going around? 
think some that people you were like you know kind of created by a label. I think uh, some people label. think that, and you know, I think that's fine. It doesn't matter. Yeah, you can't you know. waste your time worrying. No, about it. but you can find you can find all of our like tour history. You know, when we got in a van, we toured. It's just the songs are really good. I mean, that I think that's why people are still listening to them. They're not listening to them because oh, I'm gonna listen to this because. You know, this person's related to this person. Nobody does that. You did the Nobody's van life that. and you put the work in. You put the time in. I think so. I just think this, I mean, I think a lot of people were, you know, it takes longer, but I just think we had really good songs. They, Shake It still does really, really well. I still pay all my bills because that one song, it's like, <laughs> so does you were, really well. Were, were you like in high school at this time or did you I leave just, school? It was like the day after I turned 18, they were able to sign us all because I was the last one to turn 18. Okay, and that was on purpose. <clears throat> but all my friends were, <clears throat> when the record came out, all my friends were starting to think about college, mm -hmm. you know, and then they were seeing me on MTV. <laughs> you know, it was, it was pretty cool because I was not a popular kid in school at, at all. Um, I was not popular. Um, what were the circles least, that you ran in? Christian, uh, I grew up, I learned how to play in a large evangelical Texas mega church called Lake Point in Rockwall, Texas, where Alex Jones is from, by the way. I don't know if anyone knows that. Alex Jones, Rockwall, that's where me and my brothers are from. Um, and Lake Point Church, fantastic church. Um, I still comment on their Instagram all the time. Um, that's where I learned how to play, doing the youth group. Um, it was like a couple hundred kids every Wednesday night, you know, it'd be like, you know, so I learned when I was like 12, I guess, I started doing that. Okay, and you guys you know? were touring with uh, bands like The Ready Set. Never right? The Ready Set, only Have later. Of, or like uh, later. Cobra <laughs> Starship. Yes. yes, Cobra Starship, yeah. Yeah, like those types of bands. Yeah. And then uh, you had your first album and you had this big hit. Yeah. Shake It. Yeah. I'm sure a lot of you have heard it. If you haven't, you should. Yeah. Please look it up after the show is over. If you haven't, it's a masterpiece. <laughs> and it went platinum. And is this one you kind of more felt that like you were coming into your own? Did you expect it to have such a reaction? I knew Shake It was good. I remember writing it uh, in Rockwall. I wrote it in Rockwall, and I thought it was good. Um, I, I Even if you go to my Instagram, I have the original GarageBand demo of the song that's awesome you can see <laughs> um where i where i was creating it on garage band i had this idea of the girl a girl's voice singing shake shake you know doing the shake it yeah. part so you can hear it in the in the garage band um in garage bands and i still have that um but i thought it was good okay and you started to you know make money for yourself yeah do you feel like it blew up your ego yeah like i i saw that sentiment started changing because um, the way that you guys appeared in interviews yep. also changed. Like, yep. you know, you're leaning back in your seat. You got the sunglasses on indoors. You're seeming kind so of I'll, aloof. Like, that's how Mary is before the show. Yeah, Mary that's just definitely. I can put him back on if y'all want. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys started to come off a little bit different. You started acting different. It's hard, Mary. When you're 18, like? you're given a bunch of money. Everyone likes <laughs> you. It's like it's hard to not try to jump into that role you know but then especially because as you said you weren't cool i wasn't growing up no, and now you're this cool guy yep and everyone who didn't want to hang out with me when i wasn't cool and in high school <laughs> wanted to hang out with me classic you know? yeah very typical so, story um yeah it felt uh, like it felt like that movie the new guy what you were your new, new friends new like <laughs> what, what were your new friends like don't, didn't care about they don't care about you at all. I mean, some of them do, but it's like, you know, the people that come around you when everything's going good, you know, they're also quick to leave you when everything goes bad, you mm -hmm. know? And then you guys went on tour with Miley Cyrus in 2009, which mm -hmm. was a big deal mm -hmm. because she was kind of breaking away from the Hannah Montana kid-friendly role mm -hmm. and yeah. the party in the USA was huge. So you were opening for her for that year in 2009. It's funny, I remember someone saying, I don't know if this is 100% true, but I remember someone saying that Hot Topic was started removing our merchandise from Hot Topic because we did a, did that tour. Really? I don't know if that's true, but I heard that through the grapevine somewhere. You so know? you were too mainstream for Hot Topic. I think I think I think her at the time, you know, <laughs> going on tour with her at that time was yeah, probably not <clears throat> I don't know. We were already big, you know, I mean, big to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. We already had a hit song, you know. So how did it happen that two mm. members left the band in the same year? Mm. Egos 
drugs, money, it's all the normal kind of stuff, you mm-hmm. know. Unfortunately, um, it got to a it got to a point where everyone you know left the band or were forced out of the band except for me, and I took over Metro Station and you know put out some singles and an EP on my own, and then eventually me and Trace got back together and worked. It out a little bit and well let's not fast forward well, too quickly i was trying to do quick on her what <laughs> what, what really went down in 2010 with the og breakup <clears throat> because it, it turned into a duo once the the other two members left right how did that well, happen? anthony like, never officially left i think that's where people get confused is blake left he wanted to go do his own thing and anthony was still in and then me and trace kind of had different opinions. Well, I just remember Trace tweeting, and then there were two. Yeah. So that would mean you and him. Well, and there's other stuff you can find where, you know, there's articles where, you know, he was saying stuff like he was calling the, uh, the music weak. He was calling Metro Stations the music weak. If you go online, you can find some people have pointed that out. Um, you know, so there were a lot of, there were a lot of problems and there were a lot of mm-hmm. issues where people didn't feel respected. So some people had to leave. Did it feel like you were friends or were no, you not, more so not at co-workers? That time. Not at that time. We weren't friends, no. Did you say you think s- we're cool now. started out as friends, but we it We started soured? out as friends, but it soured, I think, yeah. I think, you know, especially when you get to that point, some people get really big heads and think they can do everything on their own and they don't need people... It creates, it, it, you have to have a team to get stuff done. And I was good at certain things that Trace wasn't good at. And Trace was good at stuff that I wasn't good at. And like Anthony was good. I don't know. I think it's pretty apparent by now what things <laughs> what things we're both good at. So. Well, the, the idea is, you know, he was much more front facing. Sure. He was good at having this like star power. He's a great and, like, front man, for this sure. bombastic personality, getting the crowd hyped up. Mm-hmm. And your vocals, in my opinion, at least, were stronger than his. I don't. I don't know how anybody could say differently. <laughs> <laughs> at least you're honest know. about it. I don't know. Yeah. I think anybody anybody who wants to listen to our music. <laughs> I mean, that's that's just some. That's just a band. That's how things work. You know. That's just how it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Know? So I know. Also, I'm asking you about things that you're 34 now. It's yeah. almost a half a lifetime ago. Yeah. That, you know, you forget how the details went down, so. There's some stuff I forget and some stuff I remember and, and um, you know, it's not, I definitely wouldn't change anything because I think, you know, especially when you're having those kind of issues in the band, I think I'm humbled by the situation. I think he has been humbled by the situation as well. So I think that's a good thing. You, you know, guys buried the hatchet, not even that long after, to 2013, a extent, right? To a certain extent, yeah. To you a know, certain extent. To a certain extent. I think it's just one of those things. It's like, you know, it's it's difficult to be in a band with somebody. I mean, that's just how it is, you know. What were the, the pressures of tour life? Well, you're having to wake up every day next to the same person and It's almost like being along. married. Basically married without, <laughs> yeah, any of the other stuff that comes with marriage. It's you know? being married without being in love. Yeah, I guess, cool exactly. Like that. That's right. A hundred percent. Yeah. But you're sharing money and, you know, you're sharing everything. And, Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's egos, man. Egos get in the way of a lot of stuff, you know, unfortunately. Um, I definitely. You take some of the blame there? I really felt like I knew my, I always knew my place in the band. And I was really happy with my place in the band. Being the guy who sang the hooks or you know saying stuff like kelsey or had the you know the voice of the band and could and played the guitar and was you know the other guy i was totally fine being that guy um some people just (laughs) aren't happy with their role and you have to know your role okay you know so maybe i had a little bit of an ego for sure but i really (laughs) felt like i was i knew my place Thanks for watching. Listen to full episodes of Pop Culture Crisis on Spotify. Keep up with us on social media and make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss the show. Bye, guys.